message is called Prepared for a Purpose. Everybody say prepared for a purpose. Woo! So on, on Friday, I got to speak at a youth event uh, at the, the Los Angeles Convention Center. And it's called Operation 10 City. Uh, yeah, hey man. Dr. Bill Winston. Oh man, awesome, awesome, awesome man of God. Um, and then also too, David Winston, his son, who's the youth pastor, and Nikki Winston. Uh, they had me come out and, and speak. And it was just such a beautiful, beautiful night. Uh, it was an awesome night. A lot of people were set free that night. And I want to show y'all the flyer. Uh, I want to show y'all the flyer because, uh, of course, they mentioned my movie, uh, Good Burger, of course. And, you know, I've done a lot of movies and a lot of different shows and things like that. But uh, some, when I'm on a flyer, a lot of times people will put, you know, pastor, youth, uh, author, you know, all these different things. But they always remember from the movie Good Burger, which is cool. <laughs> Which is super, super cool. And uh, God gave me a message about preparing a burger and how that speaks to us as believers. And I mean, this message was so beautiful that I was just like, I was going to do a different message for today. But then I was like, well, a lot of my SFCC family uh, wasn't at the event. And I know because of the rain and things like that. So I was like, y'all can't miss out on this. So I want to get a word that God gave me, and I'm going to do it here today, all right? Amen, 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 amen. Okay, so uh, I got a question for you all. I got a question for you all, okay? Uh, what do you need to make a burger? What do you need? Everybody answer that. What do you need to make the perfect burger? What else you need? Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. So you all said something very important. You need meat, okay? You need meat. You need meat, okay? Before you even get beef, because we need beef. We need ground beef to make a burger, right? Okay, but before you get to that beef, it first went through a process, right? Went through a process. It went through a grinder, a grinder, which is a, a machine that cuts and minces the meat, right? So you go through that grinder. Then after it's gone through the grinder and cut and minced up and all that stuff like that, then it's squished into a package. Squished into a package. And you get to squish that ground beef out of the package. You got to squish it out, right? Throw a little seasoning on there. Throw a little good sauce on there. Throw on whatever you need on top of that burger. Then what you do is you press down on the patty. You know, you put a little pressure on there to make a nice little patty. How many of y'all are cooks in here? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all, <laughs> they're like, yeah, I'm getting hungry. Okay. <laughs> then it goes on to the grill over a fire, a burning hot fire. Right? You shut the grill, cover it up, wait for like I don't know about five minutes or so, eight minutes or so. You open the cover back up, and then you wait another five or eight minutes or so. And depending on what type of barbecue outfit you have on, you got your sandals and your spatula. And you're just waiting, right? Okay, so you're waiting as you're doing it, right? Over, over the grill. You'll wait another five to eight minutes and flip it. Then you pull the burger out. Add cheese, add toppings, sauce. And now it's ready to serve. Made for a purpose. It's made for a purpose. To feed someone's hunger. Everybody say, hmm. Hmm. Feed someone's hunger. See, it starts with the beef. It starts with the beef being put through some struggle, some struggle. Beef. What's beef? Beef is, is, is flesh, right? That's what beef is. Beef is flesh. And so what's this right here? That's flesh. That's flesh. That's skin. That's flesh. It's beef. So if we look at the process of how to make the perfect burger ready to serve a purpose, a purpose that was designed for them by the cook, when we look at life of a burger and then we look at us living in earth as believers, there's some similarities. There's some similarities. Just like the burger, we might go through some trials. We might go through some tests. We might go through some seasons. We might go through some conflict that feel like we're going through a grinder, right? Cuts of being hurt by someone, let down, brokenhearted, pushed around, lied on, anxiety, all these different things comes from life's grinder. Mm, the feeling of being boxed in, pressured, 
You know, all those things happen, being pushed down, ripped apart, squished. And you wonder, what am I being formed into, God? What is all this pressure for? Who am I? Who am I? And you get wrapped up in a circumstance like meat. It's like saran wrap when you wrap up meat, right? You wrap up saran wrap or you package it and it's no way out. See, the enemy wants you to think that what happened to you, what you are experiencing, what you are up against will make you package yourself up and wrap yourself around like some saran wrap and never let anybody know what you're going through. Locking away your greatness, your greatness. Another definition of beef used in slang. Y'all know slang, right? So slang words. All right, so people would say, I got beef with such and such. I got beef with you. It's animosity, right? It's animosity. Somebody got beef with you. They got a problem with you, right? That's that animosity, and we call that beef. They got beef with me, right? See, the devil has beef with us. I want y'all to know that. The devil got some beef with us because he doesn't want us to unlock and find out who we really are, okay? He wants us to know. He wants us to think like all those situations, all those problems, you just got to put yourself in this package, right? And you're nothing. You're nothing, okay? He doesn't want us to know that we were born for a purpose. Everybody say, I was born for a purpose. So as life puts you through a spiritual grinder and the pressure of this world comes at us, he does not want you to know that some of the pressure you are going through is the thing that is going to unlock your destiny and is going to unlock your greatness. Everybody say unlock greatness. Woo! Say say it with some oomph to it. Unlock greatness. (laughs) Yeah. As long as you trust in the one that is shaping you for your purpose, which is God, which is God. That's when the hand of God is on you, shaping you like you shape a bird, right? And he takes you out of that package that you put yourself in, right? He's taking you out. And he says, it's okay. I'm still here. I'm still here. But it might feel uncomfortable, Things is moving around to get you in that shape. You know, so like beef, you know, you got to press it down to get it in the right shape. So, so like a beef patty, it's getting pushed out, right? The right shape for a burger. So he's saying, yeah, push that pain out. Yeah, okay, just you got to push some things out of your life right now. You need to push out that unforgiveness. You need to push out those habits that you've been dealing with. You need to focus on me a little more. You need to change your habits, and he's forming you. He's forming you. The Holy Spirit reminds us because it's painful when it's pressure of the world, but he's saying, hey, I'm still with you. I'm still with you. The Holy Spirit reminds us in those times in the word. I want you to turn to Isaiah uh, chapter 41, verse 10. Turn to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Amen, amen, amen. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. And it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. With my righteous right hand. What are we just talking about? We're talking about forming, forming. He's forming you. He's forming you. He's holding you up, right? So as you make a beef patty, you're holding that patty up, right? He's getting formed into the right form, right? That's what he's doing. He's helping you by making you obedient to the strength that you have. Learn how to serve in the pressure. I'm going to say that one more time. Learn how to serve in the pressure. I'm here. God has not left you. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. God has not left you. Everybody say, God has not left me. He has not left you. Now, all of a sudden, though, when you're being obedient and you're trusting in the Lord and he's forming you and you're being righteous and all these things, but then all of a sudden you see the fire, fire at a grill, right? It opens up. 
this fire, but do not have that fear of being burned or destroyed by unforeseen circumstances from the enemy. That's what that fire represents, meaning unsuspected situations has come up. A setback has started. That fire can represent that. And you are about to be put right on the fire, put right on it. Mm. But before you go through the situation, God reminds you again, in this world, there will be trouble. But I will bring you out of it. All right. I will bring you out of it. See, um, there's one tip that every chef knows when they're making a burger. It's one little tip that they do. Every good chef knows about beef patties is that to keep the shape while it's being in the fire and to keep the same mode as it's in the fire, you have to do one thing. So where's my chefs at, dude? Where my chefs at? Okay, okay. Where my chefs at? Everybody cook? Who cook it? You be cooking? Okay. All right. <laughs> Cooks right there? All right. So what is the thing that you do to a burger after you formed it when it goes in a fire, it doesn't get messed up. What do you do? Do you know? You put, you put your thumb in the middle of that burger, right? You make a divot, a thumbprint in the middle of the burger. Some people just was like, I know that. That's why I'm doing good burger, the good burger. <laughs> I be knowing that. But yo, you take your thumb and you press it inside of the meat, right? Why do you do that? Because when you do that, pressing your thumb on it, it keeps its shape while it's cooking in the fire. So it doesn't puff up. It doesn't swell up. It keeps its shape in the fire. Yeah, an unexpected thing came up. It hurts. It's smoke all around you, hardships, issues. But do not puff up. Do not stress out. Don't you give up. God's thumbprint. Huh has been pushed into your flesh. And he's reminding you of whose you are. Say, I belong to God. I belong to God because God's hand is on you. It's on you. Everybody say, God's hand is on me. God's hand is on me. God's hand is on me. That thumbprint. Now, here's a fun fact about thumbprints that I want y'all to know, okay? It's 8 billion people, give or take, it's 8 billion people in this world, 8 billion people in this world, but no one, no one has your thumbprint. That's deep. You can't tell me it's not a God. God is awesome. You were made for a purpose, a distinctive, identifying characteristic is right there. That's how they identify you. So when you also have a thumbprint on your life and pressed into your heart, God is pressed into your heart. You have an ID in heaven. An ID in heaven. Say, I got an ID in heaven. Mm, ID in heaven. So you got his characteristics, his way of doing things. His love is in you. Say, God's love is in me. God's love is in me. Jesus' grace is in me. Say, Jesus' grace is in me. Jesus' blood is in me. Yeah, that's right. See, it's pumping your heart. And now you have godly characteristics. Say, I belong to God. <laughs> See, when a thumbprint is pressed into a burger, like I explained, when it's pressed into a burger, but then when it's cooked, you can't see the thumbprint anymore when it's cooked. That's probably why I was like, what? I don't see no thumbprint on no burger when I open it up, right? But you can't see that thumbprint but it's still inside the burger, right? And when you taste that burger, it reveals what is inside, and it is the nourishment to the soul because it reveals who created it. Who created it? We are God's people prepared for a purpose. Say, I'm prepared for a purpose. Prepared for a purpose. Hey, man, hey, man, I'm prepared for a purpose. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It reveals what's inside of that burger. We are God's people. God pressed his grace upon me and his hand upon me. So no man, no woman can stop the destiny and the anointing that has been pressed upon me. I want you all to remember that. No man, no woman can stop the destiny that is pressed on you. This is your anointing that has been pressed upon you, okay? 
Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me. He's in you. He's in you. Okay? So let others know, taste and see that the Lord is good. We're spirit food, right? So everyone say taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> see, that's how you got to talk when you sizzling in the grill of life, okay? Because <laughs> life gets hot, right? It's some trouble. It's some circumstances. Things can get chaotic, right? And you're going, but God, hey, what's going on? I, I love you. I'm righteous. I love these things. And he's saying, yeah, you are. I got you through it all. Think of me. Think of me. I'll give you peace while you're going through it. That's how you talk when you're in the sizzling grill of life, trying to burn away your graceness. See, when the heat of an unforeseen situation is coming in, it's like sweat pouring down. You're like, oh, no. Oh, no. What is going on? But you stay faithful because God is cooking up something special inside of you. He's cooking up something special inside your flesh. Your spirit is in there cooking up a miracle. Everybody say cooking up a miracle. Cooking up a miracle. Cooking up a miracle. That's the thing about it. You cooking, baby? Yeah, I am. Come on. Say, so you cooking, baby? Yeah, I am. I like that response. Because you know why you cooking? Because you cooking with the king. You cooking with the king. I'm cooking with the king. Yeah. The master's... Y'all over here preaching, preaching. The master chef. God is the master chef, right? You're cooking with the king. So when they say, why is he silent? Why are you silent and not responding to accusations of the devil? Why are you silent when there's poking at you from the devil and fiery darts coming at you from the devil? Why are you silent? Because I'm cooking. I'm cooking. And I'm cooking with God. Cooking with God so he can so he can teach me how to serve the people living out his destiny. Yeah. You know how rappers, I know y'all know some of y'all work in the studio. You know how rappers, when they say, I'm cooking, when you don't see them for a while, they in the studio, you know, doing something, and you don't know what's going on, but all they do is on their social media, they say, I'm cooking. <laughs> I'm cooking. And that means, oh, he about to do something big. He's cooking. He's cooking. As you wait to be freed from a season, as you wait, cook up that joy. Cook up that joy. Cook up that praise. Cook up his name, knowing God is going to pull you out because his hand is on you. His hand is on you. Woo! When I get through this, I got a testimony. That's what you got to say. Say that right now. When I get through this, woo, I got a testimony. Hold up, where was the woo? When I get through this, woo, I got a testimony. See, that woo is the, the hypeness in it, right? Woo, that's the, get you hyped, get you excited about the Lord, that's right, because he's in you. Don't worry about that fire that's happening, that's going on. He's in you. OK, do you know the test? Once I break free from it, the amount of people that will be set free. Once they hear how God brought me out and kept me, that's the thing. He kept you. See, God knows the plans for our future. That's why he put his hand on you. You just got to remember, I am a member of heaven. You just got to remember, praise God, I am a member of heaven. Your whole life has been planned with intentionality. Your whole life. The ups and the downs. The ups and the downs. So when people go, Kale, wow, what, what has happened in your life? You know, how did you survive the hard times? How are you living like you're living? How do you continue to prosper when I know there's some things going on, but then I saw you praying and then I saw you got through it? What are you actually doing? Watch this. Watch this. When you are committed and obedient, your response is always God's love. That's how I respond. I say God's love. I say God's love. And you say not my will, but God's will. I never respond because a lot of times when things happen like that, people respond like, ha ha, you see me. I did it. Right? No. 
Never forget, always acknowledge God. That is the key. Always acknowledge God. And you say, not my will, but God's will. Everybody say, not my will, but God's will. See, that's the key. God is looking for people that will give him the glory with their influence. Give him the glory with their influence. And I tell you right now, no one will shut me up from talking about Jesus. No one. No one will shut me up from talking about Jesus. Because like the mothers used to say, because, you know, I I know I grew up in Upright Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago. And the mothers used to come up there and they used to say, God brought me from a mighty long way. Woo! God brought me from a mighty long way. See, when people see you are calm in unforeseen negative situations, that's speaking. That is speaking something. Because they're saying, I- I'm still here. I done went through all of it, but I trusted God through the whole process. And that's what you got to do. Are you committed to the process? Are you committed to the process? Amen, 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 amen. And then... When people see things happening in your life because of God, I want you to point them to this verse, okay? Point them to this verse. Turn to uh, Ephesians. Ephesians. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to Ephesians. I want y'all have some time there. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Okay. And it says... Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Uh, To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, a world without end. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask and think. The hand of God is pressed in. The power is his. I'm a mirror. I'm reflecting Jesus' power. That's what you have to think about. We want to be a reflection of Jesus. Everyone say, I'm a mirror. I'm reflecting Jesus' power. Jesus' power. And where is Jesus' power? It's inside of you. It's inside of you. It's living in you. And that outer circumstances and the problems that is going on, the enemy is trying to make you think (laughs) the power of Jesus is not inside of you. But he's there. He's there. Touch your heart and say, I know you're there, Jesus. Woo! You are a reflection of God. It's a process. But I am committed to the process. And I say it's a process because we talked about the grinder. We talked about the pressure of life. So even when it's ups and downs and it's pressure of life, you got to remember, hey, I'm okay. Keep trusting and believing. So I get up every morning and I say, whatever God wants, <laughs> that is what I'm going to do. Whatever God wants, that is what I'm going to do. You all got to get up like that. I'm doing it his way, not my way. I'm doing it his way, not my way. And the word it says uh, in Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verse 6, Proverbs Chapter three, verse six. Mm. And I love this. I love this, this verse of scripture. And it helps me all the time. It says, in all thy ways, acknowledge, come on, acknowledge him. And he shall do what? Do what? But then it says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all my ways, I acknowledge him. In all my ways, acknowledge. Now, let's go to the dictionary because I'm going to let's go dictionary style. OK, it says acknowledge means accept or admit the existence of truth. Recognize the fact of importance. I like that. Recognition, the fact of importance. It's important you know how God is. It's important you know that Jesus died and rose again and take away your sin and give you a life of eternity with him in heaven. It's important you know of the Holy Spirit and the comfort it brings while you are living a godly life. And the enemy wants you to stop your influence to help others see the grace of God that is in you. It's important to know that his hand of grace, his power is in you. 
It's in you. It's important. It's important that when God brings you out of a situation that you acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. You acknowledge him as the one who did it. Who did it? It was a, a meme that I saw on Instagram and things like that. And they see somebody holding up a trophy. They're holding up the trophy, right? They're like, woo! And the crowd is right there. And they see them holding up the trophy and all these different things. But then they show the behind of what went on. And they name all the things that happened that they had to do. Forgiveness. They had to do that. They had to let go of some things. There was stress. There was letdowns. It was a lot of things that they had to go through. All right? So God is saying, trust in me. As you're going through it, I'll get you to the victory. I'll get you there. Don't you worry. But you have to acknowledge me. Why do you acknowledge him at the end of it all or when you get through an obstacle or you get through a stressful time? Because you're helping somebody else. You're helping them. Your testimony helps others. That's why it's so important for us to be transparent so that people see the Jesus that is in us. Be transparent. Say, God's way, not my way. God's way, not my way. Because <laughs> conflict will arise to try to make you go in the opposite way of God's purpose for you. But, but you got to learn inner peace within outer conflict. I want you all to write that down. You got to learn inner peace within outer conflict. And who's peace? Jesus. Jesus is the prince of peace. And when I went through things that I went through, I was trying to do it my way. So I was focused on the conflict. Focused on the conflict. Let it direct my emotions. And we were talking about burgers earlier that's in the grill, the fire, the fire of life. That's like a burger getting up in the middle of the grill and just jumping in the fire. Why would you do that? You're being prepared for a purpose. Why are you just jumping in the fire? See, the devil was just having a field day with me because I was just on the conflict. You know what they doing? What they talking about? What's happening? OK, to get me distracted. Because he knows about the spirit that is in my heart. Oh, but God. Oh, but God. I love that when you hear that in the Bible, when it says, oh, but God, because God is about to show out. He's about to show out in your life. Come on, make some noise for God. Come on. He's going to show out in your life. See, when I gave it all to God, not my way, but his way, and I let him lead, it stumped on the devil's head. That's what it did. We got to stump on the devil's head, y'all. Stump on him, okay? It was still outer conflict. I'm not saying that everything was great, but my peace was found and understanding was found through Christ Jesus. So then that's how the blessings came through, why there's still outer conflict. See, sometimes we need to be reminded that God is still here. God is still here. And to keep your eyes on him, don't look away. Even when the enemy is throwing everything at you but the kitchen sink, you stay, keep going. The enemy is just looking crazy because when you follow Christ completely, check this out, you're not living at that old address that the enemy be going through. You're not there no more. And you know the mistake that I used to make all the time you know, when the enemy would go to my address and go, I open the door. What you talking about? What you talking about? What's happening? And we going back and forth, back and forth. And the enemy is pulling me away from what I'm supposed to be focusing on, my real purpose, right? Because as for me and my house, we serve the Lord. But I'm letting the enemy in because I want to argue with the enemy, right? I want to argue, but I'm letting that mess up my peace, disrupt my peace. Don't do it. You don't live on Toxic Street no more. You don't live on Toxic Street no more. Say it. Say it. You need to trust and believe it. They go into toxic street addresses and you're not there no more. You live in Kingdomville. Kingdomville. And in Kingdomville, grace is there. Love is there. Peace is there. Comfort is there. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is there. Breakthrough is there. You can't bring that toxicness over there. So just let the enemy just look crazy. OK, let him look crazy. OK, you can't be stopped because you had a confidence to God. Say that. Say, I have the confidence to God. See, when you know that you got to let Jesus in and when you have a peaceful heart, it harbors confidence that comes from the faith in Jesus. That's what's going on. That confidence is right there. 
because of the peace that you have and the trust that you have in Jesus Christ. Lean on the peaceful control of Jesus Christ. When you feel like you're going out of control, you know who keeps it in control? Jesus. 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 I remember I did an interview, and they kept asking me all these different things, like, how did this happen? How did this happen? I was like, Jesus. Well, what is it with that? Jesus. Well, how did you do this? Jesus. And it just got to a point where they just started knowing what I was going to say. They was like, Jesus. Jesus. And everybody in the interview was talking about Jesus. That's the beautiful thing about it. You bring Jesus into the room. Bring him into the room. You know what I mean? And, and it's deep because a lot of people talk to me. They'd be like, how are you still in this business and you're in the business of entertainment and you're doing all these different things, but you talk about Jesus so confidently because Jesus is in me. He's with me. I got to bring him to every situation, everything with my family, my business, my career, everything. I was just at a, a big meeting recently at an organization, streaming, streaming platform. I was there and they were looking for me to do start hosting some things and things like that. And as I'm sitting there, Jesus says, because they're going through my accolades, and he said, tell them you're a youth pastor. I said, okay. <laughs> because not my way, God's way. That's right. So I said, yeah, and I'm also a youth pastor. You know what that executive producer said to me? She said, I know. I said, whoa, okay. I know. I've been on your, on your social media, and I've seen you talking about it. i seen you talking about your church, Spirit Food Christian Center. Why? Because we need to be ambassadors for Christ. We need to let people know about the God that we serve. When we go through something and we get out of it, we need to let people know, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And within that, she was going, I love that perspective because of the fact that you can talk real to people within these reality shows from that perspective. Bruh. <laughs> right? It's crazy. And I sat there and I was like, wow, Jesus, pray, hey, amen. Hey, man, not my will, but God's will. Not my will, but God's will, because he protects us. He protects us. He protects us. I don't know what situation you're going through or what issue you're going through, but um, let me tell you, I've been through a lot, and there's still things that come up. Ain't nothing just perfect. Things come up all the time, and things that we have to pray on all the time. But you know what? God protects us, protects us. Turn to Philippians. Turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. In the peace of God, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, when you involve God in every action step you take to rectify a situation, you will arrive at the right solution. Every time, the right solution. God's ways are perfect. The way we do things should reflect God's ways. Amen. So in all my ways, he is involved, not half. I don't say, well, God, you can be in this part of my life, but this habit I got over here, I I'm going to keep that to myself. This thing that I've been doing, I'm going to keep that to myself. This, this thing, I'm going to keep it. You can't have that, Lord. I, I'm going to do this. Maybe on Sundays at church when I'm there, I'll do. No, it's every day. Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, you need to be the same way. Okay? Same way. So when people see you, they know who you serve. They know who you really are because you're being the same. Don't switch up. Don't switch up. Don't be in church like, hallelujah, brother. And then you get out there and you're on Toxic Street again. Don't do that. It's like people putting on a face. Boom, going to church. Boom, going over here to go talk about somebody and gossip about them. Boom, oh, somebody came over that I know was coming over. Hey, you hear me? No. Be the same person all the time. And how do you do that? By within. By within. Because what's inside of you is going to come out. Jesus needs to be on the inside. He needs to be on the inside. Leave no room for the enemy to take you out. <laughs> this is real because I talk about spiritual warfare because it's real. You got an enemy that is after you because he knows your purpose and what you can do and he influences how you can hurt other people through letting them know of the grace of God. So don't get distracted. In the word in Proverbs 14, 12, you got to remember there is a path that looks right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. 
It leads to death. Don't get distracted. Dead ends lock in your greatness. That's what dead ends do. Breakthrough comes from God. Everybody say breakthrough comes from God. See, when I saw dead ends in my life all around me, man, (laughs) dead ends all around me, God still provided a blessed breakthrough when I follow his path. Okay? Dead ends all around me, but when I say, wait, 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 Jesus, my strength comes from you. And then he shows me a path that I never saw before. And I'm like, yo, okay, wait, watch this. That's what God is telling me. Because in all your ways, acknowledge God, and he will direct your path. Amen. Direct your path. That means that God is part of every area of your life and the things you do. He wants to make sure you are always on the right track, the right track. You give God access to your life, not just part of your life, all. Everybody say all. You allow him to have the say in the things you plan on doing to make sure you don't end up at a dead end road. I don't want to end up at a dead end road. When you end up at a dead road road, it's like, you ever feel like that sometimes? I feel like that. I feel like that when I was trying to do everything on my own. I feel like I just banging my head against the wall. Lord, why is this happening? Dang, why is this going on in my life? Why, 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 why? Take me out. I can't deal with this no more. I don't see a way out. But it was only when I said, God, your way, not my way. I'm not going to react to any of the conflict or any of the trouble, any of the things that's going on. I'm just going to trust you. And all of a sudden, boop, it was ways that were opened up for me, things that were opened up to me, people that he showed me in my life that could be a blessing to me. And then he showed me why these dead ends had to happen and these problems and these issues had to happen for my purpose to serve, to serve, to serve. It happens for a reason. It's happening to you for a reason. You just got to trust in Jesus. Don't get afraid. Okay? Don't get afraid. God's golden spatula, because we were talking about burgers earlier, will pull your good burger loving God self right out of the fire. Every time. Stay in. Unlock your greatness. Unlock your greatness. See, I've learned there's purpose in the process. Purpose in the process. Now, me and Asia, my beautiful wife, Asia, see right there. <laughs> Woo! He who finds a wife find a good thing. Good thing. <laughs> I love my beautiful wife. I love my beautiful wife. And I remember there was a, you know, situation going on that we were praying for. We were praying to get a breakthrough in. And Joyce Meyer said something that said, live life forward, understand it back. Live life forward, understand it backwards. And that just blessed my soul right then and there. So when issues arrive, it's just the beginning of the victory that is coming. So now when you live life like that, an issue comes up, you go, oh, I'm straight. That's just the the start of the victory that's on the way. Okay, live life forward, understand it backwards. When you know that, you keep your greatness. You keep that grace. God views your life from eternity. I want you all to get that. God views your life from eternity. So he's timeless, right? So he's up there. Each win you're about to do has already happened in heaven. He's just waiting for you to do it. It's already happened in heaven. He's just waiting for you to do it. And that is how you live life forward and understand it backwards. So now when a problem comes up or it arises, I go, oh, hallelujah. Hey, man, this about to be a testimony. When I get through this, whatever situation you're going through right now, say it's about to be a testimony. I want you to think on that situation right now. I want you to think on that situation right now. And I want you to say, it's going to be a testimony. God, you are with me. Woo! Each win, y'all. He's just waiting on you to do it. It's already done. Everybody say it's already done. It's already done in Jesus' name. Hey, man, thank you, Lord. Hey, man, thank you, Lord. Now, oh, yeah, hey, man, make some noise for God. Make some noise for God. Now, when you're going through the fire, when you're going through a problem, like I said, some of y'all might be going through different things in your life, different stress, different things. You came in here, and you're going through some things. And heal people, heal people, y'all. Y'all have heard me say that on this stage. Some of y'all came in here looking for some healing, right? And there's some things, or you just 
looking to understand that God is comforting you while you're going through it. So I want you to understand something. As you're going through the problem and now you understand that, okay, God, you're with me. I already have the victory. I want you to start singing to our Heavenly Father. That's what I do. That's what I do is through the praise. It's through the praise you sing to him. Shout out to, shout out to our choir and shout out to Manny. Y'all do an amazing job. Amazing job. Right? And there was a song uh, by Walt Whitman and the Soul Children of Chicago. Right? And this song I used to speak to me so much when I was a kid. You know, because there was a lot of things that were going on as a kid. And then when I got older and I was going through these things, it's so beautiful how the songs that you sing in church and the affirmations and the power and the truth of Jesus, when you say those things, it comes back to you when a lot of things are stripped away, right? Or when a lot of problems are going on and that pressure is on you. Remember, I was talking about how you form a burger, right? How you form a burger. Well, when a burger gets hot, you see all that fat. And grease that pops off of that, that's what God is doing to you. He's taking some things off of you, right? And it's going to feel some pressure. And a lot of people get church hurt when it's pressure. But it's just God showing you obedience. It's just God showing you some things you need to change in your habit. Don't get afraid of the pressure. Don't get afraid of it. God is helping you. He's bringing you to your purpose. So when things are going on, you got to say, oh, Lord, how excellent. How excellent, I know you know that one, how excellent is thy name, oh Lord, come on, how excellent, come on, how excellent, hmm, how excellent, Excellence is thy name. There is none like you. I ain't in the choir, you know. <laughs> none like you. Come on, y'all, y'all say it. None like you. Yeah, you got to believe that. When you're going through the trouble, you got to say, hey, Jesus, hey, Jesus, there is none like you. Come on. None like you. Say it. Repeat it with me. None like you. See, the devil wants you to think to follow him, but you're following Jesus because you say the name of Jesus. It's none like you. Come on. Come on. None like you. Yes. None like you. Now, this is the part, if you could catch it, this is the part that I love. The tenors go, in all the earth, in all the earth, in all the earth, in all the earth, he is excellent. Okay, you know what that means? That thumbprint is on you in all the earth. That blood of Jesus is on you. That's the inner peace that you have with the outer conflict. Don't let people talk bad about you. See, it's in the power of the tongue. Never, ever, ever, ever repeat something from the enemy. I tell the youth this all the time. They might say, you the type of person to do this. You the type of person to do that. And if you just go, mm-hmm, and walk off, you just agree. Because you said, mm-hmm, even though you didn't agree, when you said, mm-hmm, or you said, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't say, yeah, 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 yeah. You say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Now, I ain't saying you got to be in the hallway and go, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you can murmur it. You can murmur it. You can say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I'm a, I'm a child of the king. I'm a child of the king. God loves me. God's name, Jesus' name is excellent. Every knee shall bow. Huh, this thing that I'm going through, it's not going to stop me. This situation I'm going through is not going to stop me because my God is timeless. The victory is already there. And I receive it in Jesus' name. 
They say in church when something when they say something good to you on, on, on at, at church and you the word is speaking to you, you say, I receive it in Jesus' name. I receive it in Jesus' name. Because you know how excellent Jesus is. He's excellent. So when it's out of conflict, I go, Oh, my Jesus is excellent. My Jesus is excellent. He's going to bring me through this. My Jesus is excellent. Whatever you're going through right now, I want you to scream out to the top of your lungs to say, how excellent. How excellent. How excellent. How excellent. How excellent. Woo. How excellent. Come on. How excellent. I get it. <laughs> in Come on. In all the earth. In all on this earth, but you're not of this earth. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. You don't live on Toxic Street no more. You are God's family. He loved you. He formed you in the womb when you were a very young baby. Before you did anything, before you went through any process, before any of these things started in your life, it was prepared for you. The ups and downs are for a reason. You know when people get excited on a roller coaster? Why do they get excited on a roller coaster? Because you know you look scary. It's like, oh, ah, ooh, you're gonna flip around, right? But why are they okay while they're on the roller coaster? Because right before they get on the roller coaster, there's a safety check. And then all of a sudden they lock you in inside the roller coaster. You locked in, right? And then they put something over your shoulders, you locked in, right? You all locked in. So if you're locked in and you know that nothing is going to make you fall throughout this process as you go up and down, up and down, up and down, that is how Jesus is in your life. You lock in Jesus. You lock in Jesus right now. You lock him in. You lock him in. I take you everywhere. The ups and the downs, the circles, the movement, wherever I go, I am locked in. I am locked in. How excellent, how excellent, how excellent, how excellent. Wait, wait, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And here's the thing about a roller coaster. Because it was locked in, scientists and people that made this and constructed it and put it together, it went through many, 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 many tests, right? So many, many, many tests, right? And so when the people come off of it, they going, woo, yeah, and you see them coming out screaming, going, yeah, they're praising. So when God gets you through something, because you were locked in, and you praise his holy name, and you say, thank you, Jesus, that was, you know what, that was fun, because I learned something through the process. I learned something through the ups and downs. I'm a bigger person from it. You know why I'm a bigger person? Because my heart is big now. My heart is big to bring in your grace and bring in your love so I don't get distracted by the conflict of how high I might go, how low I may go. Because with you, I already know it's like a heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. Don't you know that's what your heart do? You ever seen a heart monitor? Boom, 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 boom. boom. That's your lifeline. It's going to be some ups and downs. But God is pumping that heart. God is pumping that heart. God is giving you the breath. That's why you say things like you're so excellent. That's why you say things like, I have the power of Jesus living inside of me. That's why you stump on the devil's head when you get up. Because the thing about it is, is that when you get up, he wants you to forget. He wants you to look at the conflict. That's why you get the phone calls. That's why stuff started happening. That's why you check your phone on social media and it's something that you didn't agree with. When you get up, you better go to him first. First. God says, renew your mind daily. Why? Because he knew there would be trouble in this world. But I got you. But how do I got you? Because you got to look towards me. You got to know that I'm inside of you. You got to be locked in. How excellent. 
How excellent. I want somebody free today. I want y'all to be free. Free from that issue. Go ahead and whisper that issue. You don't got to say it out loud. You ain't got to say it out loud too loud. But I want you to whisper that issue, whatever the situation that you're going through, and say, I'm free. Say, I'm free. Say, I'm free. I'm free. Say, God, you're excellent. Okay, now what I want you to do. I want you, if it's someone that is putting a stronghold in your life, a stronghold, holding you down from your purpose, for the things that you have to do. An evangelist had me do this. Evangelist had me say the person's name out loud and say, I forgive you. You need to do that. Don't hold no unforgiveness in your heart. Because like I said, remember I said before, you don't want to give any room to the enemy. So you don't want to do what the enemy does. You don't want to hate like the enemy. So whatever situation you're going through, whatever person or whatever it is, I want you to say that name. Whisper that name and say, I forgive you in Jesus' name. Say, I forgive you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I forgive you in Jesus' name. Now, if that person might be you, because let's get deep that way. If that person might be you, there's some things that you might have done, some habits and things that you might have done, and only God knows. Only God knows. I want you to say right now, I forgive myself in Jesus' name. I forgive myself in Jesus' name. Because you know what? You were born for a purpose. It is a process. Every relationship is a process. You're going to go through some ups and downs. It's a process. That's why marriage is so important. It's so important because it's a process. You're understanding one another. You're loving one another. And you study what you admire. I study my wife because I study what I admire. So I wanted to know the things, all the things about her. I love Jesus. He's within our marriage and everything that we do. So I study what I admire. So you open up that Bible and you study what you admire. And you study what he put inside of you. And know how to speak against the enemy. Put the blood of Jesus over your family and the blood of Jesus over your life. Somebody here right now needs to understand that it's okay. It's okay to not be okay. But one thing you got to understand is, is that Jesus is still there. <laughs> Jesus is in my heart. It's not over. Say it's not over. You know why? Because God is excellent. He's so excellent. How excellent. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen.